Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the subantarctic little shearwater, the smallest of the kind in the New Zealand region, and birds having only been recently genetically separated from the related little shearwaters as a species all on their own. I hope you enjoy. Weighing about 250 grams in weight, and coming in at lengths of about 30 centimetres, subantarctic little shearwaters are indeed very small birds, being a black through dark grey on their back and upper wings, with their underside being paler. They appear most similar to the much smaller diving petrels, which share their darker plumage, though these birds are more robustly built, having proportionately shorter wings, as well as having more wrappers and continuous pattern of wing beats when flying. Other birds like the Hussan shearwater are also similar, but are larger, with these birds having less white on their sides. Their relationship with other related shearwaters has been quite interesting over the years, with them being most similar to the little shearwater, which they were once considered conspecific with. The two birds are indeed very similar in a wide variety of categories, including their appearance, behaviour and ecology, and were only considered as distinct after a genetic analysis study. Physically, the subantarctic birds differ in being a little more heavily built, with them also having a darker face, along with not having the demarcation line of black and white passing over their eye. Both birds live around the Cook Straits as well as down the South and Chatham Islands, with them flying with shallow wing beats and glides to obtain the food of mainly fish and squids while on the fly. These shearwaters breed in the Antipodes and Chatham Islands, though with their remoteness, little remains known about them and their intricacies. What is known though is that they will make small burrows under scrub and tussock, with them breeding through spring and summer, laying their eggs around the same time. Large numbers are often seen, with groups from 100 to 200 not being uncommon, though given they only breed on islands that have no exotic mammalian predators, animals like mice, rats, cats, and other birds like weka, Keeping the current breeding area safe is critical in preventing any potential major declines of them. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you're able to vote for the Campbell Island Shag, the only resident shags in the Campbell Islands, and also ones that are very vulnerable due to their small range. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.